A big thank you goes out to Skillshare for sponsoring this week's video. So the big tree that you can see here is known as uh, Lonely Dug. And the reason why it's called Lonely Dug is because it's a massive uh, Douglas fir. And uh, when they logged to this area, they cut everything down except for Lonely Dug, which happens to be Canada's second tallest tree. It's almost like a kick in the face, you know, cut all the trees down except for one very big one. I just photographed it uh, with a rainbow over the top so maybe there's hope for uh, old growth forest yet. The tree from this angle looks very small uh, but it, it is it's massive. And then behind the camera is uh, just outside of the logged area is what's known as the Eden Grove and it's one of the groves that uh, is kind of under fire right now. Um, they want to log it. It is a cut block and uh, the Ferry Creek blockade and uh, the Forest Alliance and a whole bunch of other people are trying to save this section. The mountain behind the camera there, or well, it's more like a big hill, is called Edinburgh Mountain and there's still quite a bit of old growth on that but it is being cut down as we speak and then past Eden Grove there's another grove of trees that I've been photographing quite a lot lately I don't think it has a name not that I know of um, and that's where I'm going to be putting all of my efforts but for those of you that didn't know what Lonely Doug was that's Lonely Doug <laughs> Thank you. 
this is day three. Um, I've been in this area for three days and I don't have an awful lot to show for it. I think I've taken two shots. Um, oh no, maybe three shots. It's extremely difficult. It's, uh, it's bizarre. It's such a, a neat looking area, but it's just so busy. So I'm in an area that I've photographed a couple of times now. Uh, I'll, I'll show you the image right now. But this time I'm looking towards the, uh, there's a bit of a waterfall and uh, more or less the same trees, but very different angle. We've had so much rain that the water is running pretty good right now. Now the first day that I got here, it just rained so much I, I had a hard time taking photographs and the water was just coming down like crazy and then it cleared up a little bit. And then last night it absolutely poured and I thought, oh great, the, the creeks are gonna be swollen like they were the first day. And the water level has actually gone down, <laughs> which is really surprising. There's another creek uh, just over uh, to my left here. And I had a walk up it uh, yesterday and it looks really nice, but the water level's gone down a lot. It doesn't look quite as good. This still looks really good. I love the angle. The biggest problem with this composition is, and I had this problem last time I was here, there's a tree right in front of me and it ruins the whole thing. It's just kind of fallen over. Not a huge tree, but so we've got angles going different directions with the waterfall and the large trees in the background. It would probably look way better without this big tree that's fallen, but uh, I have to kind of integrate it into the composition somehow. So I'll show you what I have and uh, I don't know. I, it looks pretty good on the back of the screen, but we'll see. All right. So this is the composition that I have, and you can see here's the uh, the log that's I don't know. I've kind of had to integrate it into the composition. It's funny. The last uh, couple of images I've used my wide-angle lens, my 23 millimeter, which I hardly ever use uh, for whatever reason. It seems to be working in these forest scenes. So. I wanted to put some ferns in the foreground to, to give this a little bit of depth. And then of course we have the waterfall more or less in the center. And then there's a, a log going this way and a log going that way. And then the big trees in the background. It's a real shame because I think this would look better without that log, but I, this might work, we'll see. And then I, I've tried to integrate this big old cedar on the side here. And I might try and do some horizontals and include more of that because if I swivel around, you can see that it's uh, really quite interesting, has some really interesting roots there. <laughs> so probably about, yeah, about there. The, uh, the ferns are moving a little bit, which might be a bit of a problem. And I think also that I'm going to have to use a uh, polarizer. The one thing I don't like about this, it's quite bright down here, and that might take your eye out of the frame. So we might have to try and do something with that. I think also I'm going to try and take some shots up closer to the waterfall and go on the other side of this log. Maybe I can get something looking up a little bit. We'll have to see what happens. On this trip I seem to be constantly battling the wind and uh, many of the shots I had to shoot at a high ISO. For this particular photograph uh, I just couldn't get enough depth even with a uh, high ISO so I ended up focus stacking this shot. So I took three images, uh, one for the foreground ferns, one for the midground, and one for the background and it worked out just, just right. So I was able to use a relatively low ISO with a fast shutter speed uh, and of course I had a shallow depth but once you combine those three images it all worked out pretty good.
Once again, I'd like to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this week's video. This past year has had its challenges, but it's also offered some surprising new opportunities. One opportunity was to spend more time taking up a new hobby, so I decided to head on over to Skillshare to see what I could find. Creativity and Beer, a Brewmaster's Guide to Flavor Emulation, instantly caught my attention. Master Brewmaster Garrett Oliver shares his knowledge and the creative process of what it takes to stretch your beer brewing mind and palate towards new and exciting ways to brew beer. For under $10 a month, Skillshare has a plethora of topics to choose from. Sound interesting? I've placed a link in the description down below and for the first 1,000 click-throughs, a free trial to Skillshare's premium membership. Go check it out. This is almost like spring weather. One minute it's sunny and then starts pouring a rain or hailing. Uh, I am having a bit of a hard time, <laughs> I must admit. But uh, I found this section here and what I really like about this is way back in the, in the background there, there's a, a cedar and it's up against the riverbank. So there's a little bit of a clearing there and it's catching some ambient light. So I'm hoping that, that that'll pull you through the frame. The foreground here is very dark. So what I've decided to do is include this cedar on the, uh, the right side, and then the stump, and then there's another cedar on the left, and this, uh, this tree that's fallen down in between them. Doing a 16 by nine pano seems to work. The only problem that I'm having is that it, of course, it's very dark and uh, I'm shooting at a really high ISO, 3200 again, and there's a little bit of a wind. So, um, you know, I, I don't want to go any lower than a fifth or a, or a quarter of a second. So, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a little bit of a problem. I'm shooting at F11. Um, the ferns are moving around a little bit, but now and then there, there are lulls. So it's just a matter of being patient and, and waiting for that to happen. And actually there's a lull right now. And of course I don't have my camera set up. <laughs> I'm also using a, um, a polarizer, which I don't really want to use um, because it really reduces the exposure even more. Um, but there is a lot of glare or reflections coming off the ferns and I think it might be just too, too much. So, um, that is a bit of a problem. So the polarizer gets rid of it really well. So yeah, we're at a quarter of a second F13 at ISO 3200 and I keep getting water drops on my uh, lens here. Uh, I have an umbrella in my car, I should go and get that. Anyway, I'm going to keep playing around with this. There is another composition that I'm going to try a bit later um, and then I'll probably call it quits for here. But. Uh, it's extremely busy, so I'm not sure if it's going to work or not. But we'll, we'll finish up here and then we'll go over there and see what we can do over there.
I think uh, that might be it. It's starting to, <laughs> to rain again. I have found not a bad composition. Uh, it's reasonably clean. What I've been looking for are angles. Uh, there's a, an awful lot of fallen logs here and uh, occasionally you can find a bunch of logs that are kind of fallen over on one another and they form all kinds of angles. And I think this might work because we have ferns and then we have a very large cedar that's fallen over onto a, on top of another cedar. So they're crisscrossing and then there's another one in diagonally in the background. And then we have the vertical lines of the living trees. Uh, the only thing is, is there's a snag that's kind of in the way, so it limits where I can um, compose my images. I, I'd, I'd rather, if I could, I'd, I'd really like to widen the field of view a little bit, but I have to kind of uh, zoom in because of this dead snag here. But uh, absolutely beautiful. So this is my last shot. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. And this is the end of uh, this week's video. So if you did enjoy it, please be sure to give me a thumbs up. It's very much appreciated. And uh, until next time, uh, thanks for watching. All right, everybody. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.